the the youth and business men being encouraged with the help of Santa School and Santa for the Black Kids and Flowers. That's all. But who are you doing stand up and told he'll come over to you? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't last night. They had docks. They had all the servers. They had everything. Oh no! And then what they do is come to the complicated night. Right. The complicated night. Yeah. Yeah. Things run mad, like for the bravery to us, drive cattle over for all that fella to get back to the But it happened. Uh, so you can't learn to tell me anymore. Yeah.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Good morning to you all. Good morning, Father. Welcome to Mass this Easter Sunday morning, 2021. And you're all very welcome joining us on YouTube and Facebook today. We have a number of people to pray for in our Easter Sunday Mass. From Forgney, we pray for Amy Farrell, her mother, Olive, and deceased family members. In Ballymore here, it's Noel Cuff's first anniversary today, and I just, this book stand here has been uh, dedicated to Noel by his family. We appreciate this gift to the church after it being done up here. Anniversary Mass today for Paddy O'Rourke, first anniversary for Paddy, <clears throat> and his wife, Bernie, as well. In Drumraney, anniversary mass for Edward and Kathleen Convey and their son Eamon and deceased members of the Convey family. So we call to mind God's great love on this lovely morning, Easter Sunday morning, 2021. And we are uh, in the midst of this pandemic that we're all going through. And we pray for all who have died. We pray for all the sick and all who are working hard to rid the world of this terrible plague that we have. We call to mind our sins now and we ask the Lord's forgiveness. Later on we'll have the, the new baptismal water and we light our candles and renew our baptismal promises. I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we sing the Gloria.
O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered the debt and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, raise up in the light of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We now listen to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet, three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead, and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to ju judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. <clears throat> Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloth, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the other disciple there is the young John, and being younger than Peter, was able to get to the tomb first. So here we are on Easter Sunday morning, and it's strange that we have only a few people in the church here. That's uh, because of this pandemic that we're going through, and we are praying for an end to it. But there was always trials and tribulations in the church from the time of Christ. And indeed, in the lead up to Christ himself, with God's chosen people, and we heard about them last night in the book of Exodus, uh, trying to escape from Pharaoh and all the difficulties they had and all the plagues that were inflicted because Pharaoh would keep changing his mind and not allow the chosen people to escape. And uh, they would eventually reach the promised land, but not until after 40 years wandering in the desert. And then they set up the, the kingdom, the kingdom of David and Solomon, and the temple was built, and the Lamb of Sacrifice each year, commemorating that time when they were leaving Egypt, and the door posts and the, and the lintels of the houses, um, the blood of the Lamb had to be put on them in order for the chosen people to be saved then Jesus is our saviour. He took the place of that uh, lamb, the Paschal lamb. Sometimes um, I have wondered how the Palestinian people, Palestinian Christians, would cope because uh, they, their forefathers are the Jewish people as well. And, and with that conflict that's there today, I, I often, it's one of the questions that I have. You might know that I've been involved in the Focolari movement, and there's always a woman, a leader of it. It was Kara Lubick, was the first woman. It started during the Second World War when the bombs were falling on Trent. And she volunteered to go back in and to help people in the city, and they would bring a Bible with them and take a piece of scripture and try and live that out in their lives. Well, today the leader of the Focolari movement is Margaret. Karam. She's only been appointed recently, and she's a Palestinian Catholic, uh, born in Haifa in Israel. And um, she, she shares a little experience. She said that when she was about five years of age, uh, she was out playing with some Jewish children. Um, she was out playing, and some Jewish children were calling her names because she was a Palestinian. And she went back home to her mother crying. And her mother just said to her, would you go back out and call those children? I just made some nice cakes. And she gave the children the cakes to bring home. And the next day, their parents came to the Palestinian house and, and thanked them. 
And in this extraordinary act of generosity, this situation was transformed with a warm friendship. Uh, and a warm friendship was built between the, the Jewish and the Palestinian families. As Jesus changed our world, transforming it from darkness to light, from evil to goodness. So Margaret's mum, in this case, did the same thing. So let's bring the light of Christ's love into the darkness of our hearts and minds. And we now re recite what we believe in the creed. Actually, we're going to have a renewal of our baptismal promises, which takes the place of the creed today and this Easter Sunday. So I'm just going to light my candle now from the Paschal candle, and whoever is here, we light our candles as well. So we hold these candles representing you at home as well as we remember our baptism. And so, dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life forever and ever. Amen. You may blow out your candles now. And we have the prayers of the faithful now. We pray for Pope Francis and all who serve God's people, that together we may rejoice in God's merciful love Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the newly baptized. May they celebrate with joy their new life in the risen Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who serve in public office. May they rejoice in the risen Christ's call for peace and justice in our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are sick. May they rejoice in the healing and hope of the risen Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our parish community. May we rejoice in the triumph of the risen Christ over sin and death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died. May they rejoice in God's gift of eternal life for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And I'm praying for the dead. Again, we pray particularly this Mass today for Amy Farrell and her mother Olive and deceased family members, for Noel Cuff on his first anniversary, for Paddy O'Rourke on his first anniversary and his wife Bernie, for Edward and Kathleen Convey, their son Eamon 
and deceased members of the Convy family, Drum Rainey. And the bulletin reminds us to pray for Jimmy Walsh, Fallon Robe, nephew of Maura Conlon, who died recently, and Frank Donahue, Baylin at Lawn, brother of Breda Moran, whose funeral took place on the 28th of March. And we had a death here in Ballymore yesterday, a young man only 52 years of age from Slovakia, Anton. Funeral arrangements later. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest, rest peace. in peace. spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may we be acceptable by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our debt, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Tom, our Bishop, Michael, our retired Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Danian, Saint Eugene, Saint Enon, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those whom you have been pleased to give new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counsel among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim in song the mystery of our faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon with a sincere serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, these gifts, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, the sight of your divine majesty. So to all of us who through this participation at the altar Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, and be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Remember also, Lord, your servants, particularly Amy Farrell, her mother Olive, and deceased family members. For Noel Cuff, for Paddy O'Rourke and his wife Bernie, for Edward and Kathleen Convey, and their son Eamon and deceased members of the Convey family, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, 
St. Bridget and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray that great prayer of forgiveness which Jesus has given to us all. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with his spirit. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. And we sing together now the Lamb of God. Lamb of, of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who with the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins of murder evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, praise and all thanksgiving. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, praise and all thanksgiving. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, praise and all thanksgiving. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, never was it known. Anyone thy protection, Lord, your help, thy intercession with left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly to thee, O Virgin, 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 get some money, condense it into the envelope and leave it here into the envelope slot here at the back porch of the church in Ballymore or in Drumraney in the, there's a letterbox there on, on the door, my front door uh, and then in Tang and Fogney have their own arrangements there as well. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody who was involved in the restoration, renovation of the church here. <clears throat> we spent 30,000 on, on the window here and there's, there's more money being spent on the two at the back there being done up at the moment and after the COVID is finished they'll be put back in. So there was uh, painting and wiring and the camera was put in here and with Caroline Marange and things here this morning. We thank her, we thank Netta here behind who's behind the scenes but she does a great lot of work in the background. I forgot to mention her last night when I was thanking other people, so she's been a, like a second mother to me, and not only when I was sick, but before that, and, and here, and having everything looking so well here. We thank her and the Altar Society for all the great work they have been doing. And we thank the choir for the lovely music, which really adds to our liturgy. And thank Jer Martin for lighting the fire last night, even though he was just out of hospital himself. Um, I think that's about it now. I hope it didn't leave anybody out. If people want to make donations to uh, the work that has been done, it's possible to do that through the, <clears throat> through the parish website. It's on the blog there on the, on the Ballymore and Germany Parishes website. Uh, the Holy Hour continues on uh, Friday nights. We're moving from half seven to eight o'clock. And if people want Holy Communion, I, I, I won't visit people unless I'm asked to go with Holy Communion. So if you ask me, I'll do that. Just ring up and leave a message. And the Divine Mercy continues on until uh, next Sunday. So if you know the Divine Mercy chaplet or you can get it on the internet, uh, there's a novena starting on Good Friday. So we can continue that now until until next Sunday and the Lord will, will bless us and no better way than to, to keep this virus away than prayer itself. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, one in failing love and favour, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks. Thanks be to God. And a happy Easter to you all. Oh, God, wait.